Your Excellency, Chief Justice Richard Banda SC retired, Lion Clement Indala, District Governor, District 412, Lion Samir Kumar, International Director from India, or Lions Clubs members, club members present here, or cabinet ministers and deputy ministers present here. Honorable Raf Juma, Member of Parliament for Mangochi, uh, for Mangbe, and Minister of Economic Planning and Development. Mrs. Howard Dilowe, uh, Chief Secretary to Government. Honorable Henry Chibwana, and all members of the National Executive of the People's Party. Mr. Besta Mandere, this is Commissioner for Mangochi District. Distinguished lions, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to digress a bit before I go into my text to say a few words off the cuff because I really feel excited and inspired this morning. It's good to come to a meeting of this nature in a free environment. And it's good to be able to attend an event such as this as a Malawian and as a president and as a lion. <laughs> Chief Justice Richard Banda has warned me just now that he is not attending another Lions event without a blue blazer. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back to Sun and Sand. As I closed my eyes to imagine him in a blue blazer, and I closed my eyes and imagined me in a blue blazer. <laughs> sun and sand is one of my favorite spots on Lake Malawi. But I thought that you should allow me to share this little story that doesn't affect Lions Club but, uh, uh, or Lions Organization, but but, uh, but it took place at a similar event here at Sun and Sand at this very pavilion. I think it was 2002-2003 when President Mandela was invited to come as guest of honor for the International Rotary Conference, similar to this one. And in their wisdom, at the headquarters, decided that they were going to invite Joyce Pat to give the keynote address on the role of women in mainstreaming gender. And when you tell me about that subject, I get excited. <laughs> and so I go to work, prepared my speech, came to Mangochi, to Sun and Sand. When I got here, politics had it taken center stage. It had been decided that I should not be allowed to speak. So I got into this pavilion and was sitting exactly where the chief secretary is sitting, waiting for my turn to speak to a distinguished gathering like this. Because for me, Rotarians, Lions, when I am in their midst, our chemistry is right, because I also believe in their hopes. So I was sitting there excited, especially the subject they had given me. Unbeknown to me was that uh, other quarters had decided I must not be allowed to speak. But President Mandela was sitting here, where Chief Justice is sitting, and it was not going to be easy for them to do it straightforward, to just say you can't speak when I'm on the program. So they told the master of ceremonies, whose name I shall not mention, <laughs> to make sure that I'm given two minutes. And I don't know how I can articulate issues of gender in two minutes. 
So I decided that once I'm standing there, I truly believe with a distinguished guest here, like President Mandela, nobody is going to be brave enough to get down there to stop me. <laughs> so I will continue to speak. And I dared to speak. And I went on and on. And my president lost his coup. And he sent somebody down there in the middle of my speech to stop me. And, I, and, and it was obvious that we were pulling one another as I continued as fast as possible to pump it in. <laughs> Finally, I, did, I had no choice but to stop because twice I stopped and looked straight into the eyes of President Mandela. And he looked straight at me enjoying the speech and not knowing the dynamics on the ground. <laughs> Finally, after I spoke, the rest, even son and son, doesn't know. Because when I got out of the gate, they were waiting for me to ambush me and assault me. I will forever be grateful to late Honorable Henry, Henry Moyo, who changed his mind and tipped me. And I left this place running for my dear life. I'm saying this just to demonstrate that uh, the freedom that we enjoy now must never be taken for granted. I'm, I, I want to emphasize that for us to be lions, to be Rotarians, to work in our communities and change the lives of people, peace and freedom must prevail first. And it is the person sitting in the driving seat of that nation that must make sure that we create an environment where our lions can operate without fear. <laughs> so for me, it doesn't matter where Jean Matanga belongs as a party, or where Ndala belongs as a party, or where me as Joyce Banda belongs. At the end of the day, it's about Malawians first. especially those of us who claim to be speaking for the voiceless, especially those of us who spend day and night working for other people. I go all over the world and the first thing I want to see are founders. I sit down with them, heroes, people like Nelson Mandela. You sit down with them just wondering what is it that went into their mind to decide that they were going to take the sacrifice. While all of us are in our homes enjoying ourselves, they want to stand up for the truth. They want to fight for a better life for ordinary people. And they are prepared to pay any price. That is what, is a, lion, what a lion is all about. To be prepared to work for other people, to change the lives of those that are underprivileged, and to speak on behalf of the voiceless. And so I'm just so proud to be a lion. It is uh, with great pleasure, therefore, that I stand before this special gathering of lions, leaders, and members of District 412, comprising Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. As you may recall, December last year, my husband and I were privileged to be in inducted as honorary members of the Lions Club of Blanta. It is therefore a distinct honor for me as head of state and a fellow lion to welcome you to Malawi, the warm heart of Africa, the real warm heart of Africa. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to Lions Club District 412 for choosing to meet here in Mangochi on the shores of Lake Malawi. Malawians are honored to host and be part of the world's largest service club organization, which contributes to humanitarian service in our communities. Lions Club members fully accept their responsibilities to their respective communities. <coughs> As a Lion member, I share your commitment to community service and to help those in need. 
As lions, we sail. Fellow lions, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at a time when we read about so much bad news in the world, it is pleasing to note that many good things are also being carried out in our four countries, and indeed the world, by the Lions Clubs. I can testify to the numerous good works of our own local Lions Club, as alluded to earlier by uh, Lion Ndara. The construction of uh, the multi-million dollar eye hospital facilities at Kamuzu Central Hospital in Dilongwe, Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital in Blantyre, Mzuzu Central Hospital, and recently at Zomba Central Hospital. The provision of millions of kwachas in bursaries for our bright needed students, which will help to empower the less privileged through access to education. There are many more examples of noble work, and I commend all these achievements. I'm particularly touched by our mood. We serve. My government believes that provision of essential services and improving the plight of the less fortunate in our society is a shared responsibility. We all have a critical role to play. While it is the responsibility of government to put in place conducive policies and programs aimed at providing essential services, like social protection interventions, there is equally a number of areas where all of us, the private sector, faith community, NGOs, as well as individuals, can participate. It is for this reason that I would like to commend the Lions Club for the role that you play in complementing government's efforts to provide essential services to our people, as well as alleviating the suffering of the less fortunate in our communities. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, my government's vision is to eradicate poverty through economic growth and wealth creation. The challenges we face are numerous, and these include poverty, disease, and lack of opportunities. We should not accept that children should suffer from malnutrition. We should not accept that school children should learn under trees rather than proper classrooms. We should not accept that mothers should die while giving birth to another life because the nearest health center is so far away. We should not accept that our youth who represent both the present and the future of our countries should stay idle at home without opportunities to realize their full potential. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in Africa, women and youth constitute the majority of the vulnerable segments of our population and face the brunt of poverty and marginalization. Paradox paradoxically, they make up the bulk of our productive labor force. For us to overcome this, there's need to align our policies and programs to uplift the majority of our poor people out of poverty. Africa needs a new paradigm based on good governance, transparency, and accountability of government. Values of volunteerism, stewardship, service to humanity, and selflessness. I truly believe these are the values upon which the lion's motto is founded. Fellow lions, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a continent, we must invest in our human capital to take advantage of the demographic div dividend of our large numbers of young people in Africa. We must invest in health, education, and skills building. We should use this people power to transform our continent into a prosperous one. This is possible if all of us, government, faith community, private sector, and other charitable organizations, embrace the values of stewardship, selflessness, service to humanity and volunteerism. For a poor person living in a village in Africa, the issues of, issues of access to essential services, the challenges posed by climate change, population pressures, and economic challenges all meet this person on the doorstep of his or her house. As we look to new ways to implement programs to move our people out of poverty, 
We must look at the interconnectedness of interventions in health, education, economy, and population. This person wants to ensure that her agricultural work provides enough food so that she can feed her family and improve her income and have access to better services. She wants her children to be able to get medical care when they are sick. She wants all her children to be able to go to school. And she wants schools and hospitals to be safe, accessible for her, from her village, and staffed by well-trained teachers and doctors. She wants to raise her children without the fear that she will die giving birth to the next child. She wants to be able to choose the size of her family so that she can easily provide for her children with everything they need for success in life. I wish to congratulate you, Lyons District 412 Governor Clement Indara, and your cabinet members. You have cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> From the four countries for your stewardship and selfless service to humanity. I wish to assure you that as president of this country, I offer my support to the Lions Club International. <laughs> Together we can make a difference in the lives of the less fortunate. In any case, I don't even think I have a choice because I'm a lion. <laughs> I therefore wish you good fellowship, teamwork, and personal satisfaction as you deliberate at this conference. May your actions prove that the Lions Club movement remains a valuable asset in our communities and continue to demonstrate the true meaning of the Lions motto, we serve. I wish you successful, fruitful deliberations. It is now my honor and privilege to declare the 2013 Annual Lions Clubs International 51st District <coughs> Convention officially open. May God bless you all.